Welcome back to Else Nutrition's channel, leading the early life plant-based clean nutrition revolution. Joining us to discuss, to give us a high-level overview of the earnings, some growth expectations, and so much more, uh, we've got Hamutal, uh, the co-founder and CEO, joining us. Welcome. Hello, Kyle. Always a pleasure. Great to, to be here. here. Yeah, pleasure. Likewise. So I'm going to get right into this. Um, in Q3, Else products were listed in nearly 13,000 stores in uh, basically North America compared with the 3,000 stores for the same period last year. Uh, management expects to reach over 15,000 listed stores and over 40,000 points of distribution by the end of this year, calendar 2023. And you also signed a letter of intent uh, with Danone. So there's been a lot of growth. Can you kind of discuss you know, these, these catalysts and these future catalysts coming into play over the next couple of years for growth? For sure. So... Generally speaking, uh, key growth catalysts are the North American market and potentially the uh, in the next years, uh, our recent Danon LOI signed this November uh, for multi-stage collaboration, uh, which will start with a licensing agreement to commercialize our proprietary products uh, and include them in their specialized nutrition portfolio. Um, regarding the North American market, um, we, in 2023, we added 10,000 stores uh, in North America, and we now have 10,000 doors in the U.S. Uh, so that includes grocery stores, including uh, 1,200 Walmart stores, natural food stores, and, and many others. And um, in the U.S., it is a result of a steady and intensive effort over more than three years. And um, we started online in late 2020, and in February of 21, we started in Sprouts, which was our first retailer, about 30, 350 stores. And over a year, we grew to 1,200. Um, our initial launch was purely one product. That was the toddler organic product formula. And then we started getting into both grocery and drug stores, uh, which first uh, chains uh, were such, uh, you know, Big Y, Winn-Dixie, and Rayleigh's, and then also in a few hundreds of Walmart stores and CVS, growing to more than 3,500 by the end of 22. At this stage, our toddler organic products still led sales, but we added uh, also our first kids' uh, powder, powder shakes that was in a powder form, not in a ready-to-drink yet, and then our cereals and growing not only the store count, but also our points of distribution, meaning our number of stores multiplied by the SKUs. Um, so at the beginning of 23, we saw a big jump uh, as both Walmart and CVS grew their store counts significantly due to the results that they saw. And, and we also added additional retailers such as Stop and Shop, Giant Foods, which are big grocers, and in this stage, growth drives, drivers were the toddler organic and toddler omega. These are both toddler products. And now we see another growth stage uh, where we are adding more retailers and doors. And this is driven mostly by our kids ready to drink product line. This is, this is the, one of them. So this is a, a huge category. This is a a category that is, a, you can actually say it's four times the size of the infant category in, in the U.S. alone. Um, and it's a, a much faster mover than any of our powder products. Um, so <clears throat> and we just released vanilla and chocolate ready-to-drink products in the U.S. And they were already listed <clears throat> by several retailers and with which uh, we, we expect to reach shelves already this year, as we promised. Um, these products play uh, in a new market segment, as I said, which is much larger than toddler and cereal. And, and we have a winning combination of uh, advantages such as great taste, low sugar level compared to any competitor, um, plant-based, of course, which is quite unique, um, and the most unique parameter is our whole food ingredients and clean label product. Um, and of course, we play with a competitive price. So this is expected to be a very, very major growth catalyst uh, for the next couple of years. Uh, the level of interest from retailers is much stronger compared to past launches. And, and we have great expectations from, from these products. 
Um, in Canada, our launch story was very different and, and much faster. Um, instead of going to the, um, you know, the long route, uh, like we did in the US, we partnered with a strong local distributor and they helped us get into most grocery retailers in the first six to nine months of our launch. So now we're already in three stores, uh, including the, the, the largest banners, and they also listed the entire range immediately. So this uh, helped us get into more and more, I mean, get gain more uh, velocity and, and, um, and revenue growth faster. Today, we're launching also the Ready to Drink in Canada. Um, and we're already listed in several chains and also brought uh, in new ones such as Costco.com and to follow them, then to be followed by stores. Um, and the reception in Canada is, a, is as good as in the US. We also have the other two initiatives in other countries, which is um, the, the launch product in the UK, already launched uh, in October. And we also um, are about to launch our toddler Omega and our follow-on formula, which is an infant product in Australia. Um, our expectations for 2024 from these initiatives are still low. We already are, and we already have products to sell in Australia and started the, the rollout in UK, as I said, but it will take time for these sales to grow to significant numbers. Yeah, I definitely appreciate all the insights on that. I mean, the revenue guidance you gave was in the range of 2.7 million to 3 million for the fourth quarter of 2023, representing growth of 58 to 75% compared to the third quarter of 2023. And the company is kind of rebuilding its sales velocity on Amazon and its own e-commerce stores. You mentioned some online with Costco there as well. Um, as you expect these channels to kind of return to growth in 2024, can you discuss kind of how e-commerce is kind of a, playing a, a bit of a role uh, within your growth here and just talk about the online side of it as well? Sure. So currently we have several e-commerce channels um, at play. Amazon.com, our main online channel in the US. In Q2 of 22, we reached a peak in this channel, mainly due to the shortage of infant formula at the time in the US. In Q3 and 4 of 2022, we started to have our own inventory issues that brought us to almost complete out of stock by the end of the year. That was very unfortunate. Um, a situation that mainly impacted Amazon.com because we made a prior, we made a decision, a strategic decision to prioritize filling the new retail stores that we were supposed to get into at that time. Uh, I mean, in Q1, so we prepared for that. We kept re kept inventory, um, and we kind of shortcut um, the Amazon store in order to do that. Um, since the beginning of 23, as we're building our inventory levels back up. Uh, we see a steady growth in this channel, and now that we have inventory available for all products and are launching ready to drink as well as we expect this uh, as well, we, we expect to, to accelerate. We're also increasing our marketing is investment in this channel and improving our effectiveness. Um, we also launched uh, at Amazon.ca Canada uh, last year, and now in the UK and Australia. In 2024, we will intensify our efforts um, in these countries to make these revenue streams more efficient. Uh, efficient. Our second U.S. e-commerce channel is our own e-store. And let's say a year and a half ago, it was a major contributor still. But in the last few quarters, we reduced our marketing investment in this channel and sales were, went down accordingly. We did, we did so because we the combination of high spend on marketing to bring traffic into the store with exploiting shipping costs made it an unprofitable channel and we prefer to focus on profitable e-commerce channels of course in the us we have additional e-commerce channels such as independent e-commerce sites like iherb and thrive market these have been growing steadily over the last year and we expect them to sell ready to drink as well second retail retailers e-commerce sites like walmart.com uh, that have two main effects and um, they add to our revenues and they are gateways to selling in stores because moms are looking first uh, at the e-commerce site and then they go to buy it to, I mean, they're looking at options. So we must be there. We expect these to grow in volume in 2024, but also to grow the channel itself by adding the online arms of additional major retailers. 
such as Costco.ca in Canada and to follow by by many others. Uh, yeah, that's it. Now, just to finish up here, I want to just kind of view on the cap structure side for those that are paying attention. Do you want to discuss kind of institutional versus retail and insider ownership? Sure. So on an issued and outstanding basis, insiders hold approximately 23% of the company. Two institutions hold approximately 17%, and the remaining 60% is held by retail investors. Our retail investor base, as of our last count, was well over 17,000 investors. We would like to continue to expand our retail investors as we would like to have a wide audience as possible. And as a company grows, we we know we will also attract other institutional investors as well. well. On that note, I'll pass that question off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section below. And consider subscribing because when news catalysts continue to come down the wire, of course, we're going to bring it to you here. But on that, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Mm -hmm.